Hello, my name is Marcin from INT4. While it is usually the inbound interfaces that we care about most, as they carry requests and demand from the customer, a typical business process execution will depend on several business messages exchanged back and forth between your organization and the customer. In this video, we'll explain how API testing for outbound and inbound differ and how to utilize the various techniques for testing outbound communication for several different scenarios. First, let me give you some hints on the inbound and outbound tests in INT4 Suite. This is how the inbound test looks like. INT4 Suite virtualization mechanics prepares and sends the message to the system under test, pretending to be the external partner. Then the results of processing this message are captured and validated against rules and reference data. For outbound testing, we are going to request the system under test to generate the message and then validate the outcomes of its processing. Note that for outbound message, INT4 Suite is not sending anything. It's either waiting for a message to arrive, for example, as a result of a previous testing step, or specifically asking the system to trigger the message. It is important to differentiate here between the simpler component and the end-to-end -end testing. While definitely more complex, it's quite easy to picture the end-to-end -end testing scenario. In our example, an inbound purchase order will create a sales order in the system. The next step in the process could be an automated order confirmation response message. In such a scenario, IND4 Suite would not need to trigger anything. The system under test will process the inbound message and send the response based on the configuration. For component-based testing, the testing focuses on the confirmation message only. To achieve this, we need to ask the system to re-trigger the confirmation for an existing order. While it might seem counterintuitive, such re-triggering will actually require a number of steps to be executed both in the S4 HANA system and eventually in the integration platform, allowing us to simulate and test the order confirmation process without the need to test order creation itself. This is how component-based testing can be achieved for outbound messages from the SAP system. Retriggering messages in S4 HANA is not limited only to sales orders. For most of the business scenarios where the communication is initiated as a result of the business process steps, like dispatch advice following a picking confirmation or a vendor purchase order following a confirmed purchase request, the same can be achieved. Let me take you through an example. In our case, we will re-trigger an invoice IDOC from the backend SAP system, which will be processed then by SAP PI. Same technique would apply for any other integration platform. To run such a test, we need a properly configured automation object for PI E2E outbound type. You should be able to recognize the usual elements that define the validation rules and PI interface name. If not, it's a great moment to stop for a while and see the other videos from this crash course. Next, the specific settings for repeating the invoice message. The main setting is to enable the trigger the output from message control NAST field in the automation object. For this to work, we need to provide details to message control to re-trigger the specific message that we need. We will specify these following fields. Key A, PPL, output application, value V3 refers to the invoicing module. Key S, C, H, L, output type, value RD00 refers to the invoice document output type. This is linked in SAP S4 HANA to specific program that constructs the output. OBJ KY, object key. Here we need to provide a key. In this case, it will be the invoice number. We want our automation object to be generic and support multiple different test cases for different documents, so the key is not hard-coded here, but configured to be extracted from the test payload data. The XPath expression seen here is strictly related to the message data structure. We need also to do one more thing. Instruct INT4 Suite to wait for a specific document. We will do so using another variable with special processing step to instruct the capturing program to fetch only the message, which the exact document number that we need. Again, 
XPath is used to read the value from reference data and use it for locating the new message at the integration platform output. In case you'd want to capture a message as a result of a previous process steps, you would not read the number from the test case, but from a number generated or read in the execution of the previous test case. This will be shown in more detail in the end-to-end -end demo video. A test case using this automation object needs to contain only one payload, the one that we are expecting to receive after the integration platform processing. We could either provide that payload manually, or even better, use the message selector or configure the robotic crawler to extract multiple historical documents for testing purposes. Side note, if you're capturing the reference data from production, be sure to focus on documents that would be also available in the test system. Consult your project basis team to learn what was the date of the production copy, so that the extracted document numbers will also be available in the test system. Let me now run the test case and show you the results. The test was run successfully. We can observe the new document captured and validated against the reference. Please note that we did not need to log into SAP system to re-trigger this message. It's all done behind the scenes by Ant4 Suite, so you don't need to leave the comfortable API tester cockpit. With INT4 Suite, you can not only send test messages, you can also test the processing of messages that should arrive from other components, even force their generation in the backend system. Thank you.